And the next item of business is a statement by Mary McAllen on Grangemouth Refinery. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of her statement. Therefore, there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I call on Mary McAllen, Cabinet Secretary, around 10 minutes, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, I'm very pleased to have the opportunity today to update the Chamber on the Scottish Government's response to the announcement by Petronius to begin preparatory works on an import terminal at the Grangemouth Refinery. Firstly, I should like to uh, begin by acknowledging the significant contribution that the Grangemouth Refinery makes to Scotland's economy, both in meeting our domestic road and air fuel demand and in providing highly skilled and well-paid jobs. I also place on record my support for the workforce and I want to highlight their uh, unique importance in delivering Scotland's transition to net zero. I want to express uh, my gratitude to them as well as to the operator as they continue maintaining operations through what has been and continues to be an extremely challenging global market. The announcement by uh, Petroenius, which was confirmed to their workforce on the same day it was announced to the Scottish Government, uh, namely the 21st of November last year, this was a, a commercial one made by the company. They've made clear that it responds to prevailing and expected global market conditions, and importantly, that it does not convey closure. Indeed, they have stated that the anticipated changes are expected uh, to ensure security of supply for road and aviation fuels in Scotland long into the future. However, I absolutely understand the concerns and the questions that have been raised in recent months, uh, primarily in respect of the refinery's workforce. I therefore wish to use my statement today to set out two principal matters. Firstly, to confirm the Scottish Government's resolute commitment to playing our part in ensuring a just transition uh, for the cluster and the wider community and to cooperating with all those res with responsibility in that regard. And secondly, to set out the activity and engagement that we've undertaken and will continue to undertake pursuant to this. Presiding officer, the Grangemouth refinery is of strategic importance to Scotland. Therefore, as you would expect, the Scottish Government has engaged with Petronius and other businesses as well as our public sector partners regarding the future of the cluster for some time. However, following their announcement uh, last year, ministers have spearheaded an enhanced programme of engagement with the business and its shareholders, with trade unions, with the UK government, with Falkirk Council and others. In the days immediately following Petronius' announcement, the First Minister met with Grangemouth Senior Management, and my colleague Neil Gray, the former Economy Secretary, met with Unite the Union, the STUC, and held a parliamentary briefing for MSPs. The following week, ministers held meeting with their UK government counterparts and thereafter with constituency representatives and the leader of Falkirk Council. Neil Gray then proceeded to meet with the Petro Inia senior management and with shareholders and on the 13th of December appeared in front of the Economy and Fair Work Committee on this matter. Then, on Thursday 18th January, he chaired the inaugural meeting of the Grangemouth Future Industry Board Leadership Forum, which was attended by Scottish ministers, including my colleague Gillian Martin, uh, Scottish Enterprise, Falkirk Council, Union representatives, Petronius, a UK government minister, Graham Stewart, and others, including from Forth Valley College. Presiding officer, this engagement has centred on seeking to reach a collective understanding on how to realise the potential of the cluster and secure that truly transformative and sustainable future for those who live and for those who work uh, at Grangemouth. This includes our commitment to explore every avenue to accelerate the build-out of low-carbon new projects at the cluster. So this remains my priority as I take up post in my first uh, few days as Cabinet Secretary for Wellbeing, Economy, Net Zero and Energy. I've already exchanged letters with the business and I plan to meet them soon. I've also corresponded with Minister Stewart. I've responded to the committee's most recent correspondence to me today, and I'm now giving this statement. Importantly, I've also set a date and circulated a focused agenda for the next GFIB leadership forum. When we meet, I will restate our commitment to encourage new low carbon projects, emphasizing the need for urgency to make sure that we can maximize new opportunities and minimize the gap between the refinery's transition and those new opportunities becoming available. Now, the Chamber will be aware that these matters engage both reserved and devolved responsibilities, and I therefore welcome the UK Energy Security Minister's commitment to attend GFIB and his confirmation to me in writing that the UK stands ready, and I quote, 
to engage with the business on any proposal it presents. Uh, we have seen elsewhere how the UK is able to provide significant financial support to aid industrial transition, most recently in Wales. And I trust that the UK Government, uh, particularly with Minister Stewart's confirmation, will bring that same commitment to Scotland, to Grangemouth and very practically to our next GFIB meeting. Now, Presiding Officer, I mentioned that the development and deployment of emerging technologies is a critical part of a just transition for Grangemouth. Avenues such as hydrogen production and biofuels manufacturing, they potentially offer the opportunity to transition to new sustainable jobs and technolog technologies that are critical to our path to net zero. And I want to assure the Chamber of work which is underway in, in pursuit of this. Firstly, Petroenius has commenced early study work focused on the future establishment of a biofuels refinery at Grangemouth, capable of producing sustainable aviation fuel, or SAF. This project, if taken to fruition, could see Grangemouth become home to Scotland's only SAF production plant, capable of meeting future aviation demand for decades to come. The Scottish Government is supporting this project, and in my former role as Transport Secretary, I commissioned an expert working group on SAF, of which Petroenius are part. It met for the first time in mid-February this year. There are technical and regulatory issues to resolve. Businesses uh, have been clear that the UK's post-Brexit proposals on a HEFA cap present a barrier to their biofuels um, considerations. We stand ready to work with all stakeholders to overcome these issues and to promote the feasibility of a biorefinery at Grangemouth. Separately, Ineos are considering fuel switching at Grangemouth. This project would see the power source of Ineos's assets at Grangemouth transition from natural gas to hydrogen, enabled by the construction of a low carbon hydrogen plant connected to carbon capture and storage. If connected to the Scottish cluster, the business believes that the project could evacuate approximately a million tonnes of carbon emissions per annum, significantly contributing to Scotland's net zero ambitions and indeed the UK's. Now, the deployment of CCUS via Scotland's Air, uh, ACORN project is critical to this. UK Government progress on this is long overdue, and while I sincerely welcome recent developments, these are still too slow, and I use this opportunity today to urge and to ask uh, the UK Government to urgently provide clarity. Presiding officer, Grangemouth has a long industrial tradition, which the Scottish Government is determined to see preserved. These are just two examples of how that might be done. And of course, these opportunities, they set alongside that that could be realised via the fourth Green Freeport and the four, uh, Falkirk Growth Deal. Ultimately, presiding officer, it's clear to me and to those with whom I've been working that the infrastructure, skills, knowledge and industrial expertise with which Grangemouth is synonymous will be fundamental to unlocking our tradition. As members know, the refinery sits within a wider industrial cluster that provides a home to 10 large operators, employing approximately 3,000 people and upwards of those numbers at different times, uh, and all of them with a variety of skills, expertise uh, in chemicals, oil and gas, and wider manufacturing sectors. Combined, this cluster is Scotland's leading manufacturing hub, providing a range of products and services that are vital to the functioning of our economy. And it's in this context that I wish to raise my final point, which is the development of our Grangemouth Industrial Just Transition Plan. Development of the plan commenced early last year, working extensively with members of the GFIB, industry operators, workforce representatives and the Grangemouth community. This early work has allowed us to develop key aspects of the plan, including, first and foremost, setting a vision for the cluster in 2045. Through our work, we've heard from a range of stakeholders across industry who have outlined their ambitions for the future, as well as some of the challenges that we will face in seeking to achieve this. We've also heard from workforce and community members outlining their priorities for improved access to jobs and training and a desire to foster civic pride in Grangemouth as a place that will undoubtedly help to drive Scotland's net zero transition. As we move towards our spring publication, we will continue working with a broad range of stakeholders to articulate the action that is required to deliver that vision. The development of our Just Transition Plan, of course, it predates uh, Petronius' announcement on preparation works on the import terminal, but work in this respect will be captured in the plan and will inform our thinking. 
Presiding officer, I am very pleased uh, to give my first statement in my new role on this important topic, which spans economic, social and environmental issues. In closing, I restate the Scottish Government's commitment to working with all interested parties to plan for and to realise the fairest and most prosperous transition possible for Grangemouth and for Scotland, and I commit to updating the Chamber on progress in this regard. Thank you. Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in her statement. I intend to allow around 20 minutes, after which we will need to move on to the next item of business. Members wishing to ask a question who have not already done so should press the request to speak buttons. And I call first Douglas Lumsden. Uh, thank you, President Officer, and I thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of this statement and welcome her to her new role. I also wish to acknowledge the significant contribution that the Grangemouth Refinery makes to the Scotland's economy. And from my visit to Grangemouth earlier this month and meeting some of the workforce, I know how much they care about the future of the terminal. But the news that shocked most people in November was no surprise to the Scottish Government. From an FOI response, we have seen the disgraced former Cabinet Secretary Michael Matheson met with Petro Enios in February 2022. And his letter from April 2022, we could see that options were being evaluated and the Government committed to a just transition for Grangemouth workers. It's clear they knew what was coming. So can the Cabinet Secretary tell me what preparation work was carried out between April 22 and up to when the Petri Ineos announcement was made to protect the workforce? And why are options not further advanced, considering the Government have had two years to prepare? And Unite the Union survey of the workforce found that 88 per cent of respondents said politicians were not doing enough to protect and support jobs at Grangemouth. They have been let down by the Scottish Government. Have they, Cabinet Secretary? Cabinet Secretary. Um, I, I think I would open my response to Douglas Lumsden by um, reiterating uh, that something that's been put to me frequently, even in the number of days that I've been leading on this matter, which is a plea from those involved to not politicise this matter. So I, I do urge Douglas Lumsden and his, his colleagues to resist the urge uh, to do that. Um, the, the point about when um, the Scottish Government was aware of matters, I was already very clear in my statement that we were informed of Petrionis' decision to begin preparatory works assessing an import terminal on the same day as the workers and of the UK government. I was equally clear in my statement that as a responsible government, we have been engaged for years with the owners and operators of Scotland's yes. central industrial complex. Of course we have. It would be uh, a complete dereliction of our duties if we were not engaged with them on that. And of course future planning um, is part of that. But it's crystal clear this decision was made to us at the same time as it was to, to the wider community. And my focus now is on doing those two things. It is one, maximising the opportunities for new and emerging technologies and minimising the gap between any transition and them becoming available. Daniel Johnson. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Can I welcome the Cabinet Secretary to her place? At a, in a portfolio that often talks about growth, it's good to see her leading by example with her expanding range of uh, responsibilities. Uh, but this is a very serious matter. She was right to pay tribute to the workforce. They are highly skilled, and this is a profitable site. And while she asks us not to politicise it, it's Unite themselves in a statement released yesterday who state that they are angry at the failure of both the Scottish Government and the UK Government to bring forward proposals. So can I just push the Cabinet Secretary? When did the Scottish Government first receive an indication from Petrionios that this is a possibility? Secondly, can I ask, what is the impact on the future footprint and possibilities given the cessation of refining on the site? And finally, has the Scottish Government discussed whether there are steps that it could take to maintain current operations? In other words, have they asked Petronius what would it take to keep refining at Grangemouth? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, thank you. Very happy um, to respond in similar terms uh, to, to Daniel Johnson as I did to, to Douglas, Douglas Lumsden, which is to say that the announcement was made to the Scottish Government on the 21st of uh, November 2023, the same day as it was confirmed to the workforce and to UK Government and, and wider um, stakeholders. I want to uh, reiterate, and this was something I was keen to stress in my statement, how important the views of uh, the workers at Grangemouth are and then being articulated through the unions um, with whom we have had considerable 
uh, engagement, and it will be um, my intention to ensure that continues to be the case. Their role on the Grangemouth Future Industry Board uh, Leadership Forum will be critical to that multilateral discussion that we need to, we need to have. In terms of um, future activity, I've already spelled out how our intentions are to seek to maximise the opportunity for new and emerging um, technologies. This decision to consider uh, preparatory works on, on an import terminal is one that has been made by the company. It has been made uh, against prevailing and expected global uh, market um, conditions. And I understand it is one that will uh, secure fuel supply in Scotland for years to come. And because of those combination of matters, um, presiding officer, my focus is looking forward and not back. Thank you. Uh, Michelle Thompson to be followed by Stephen Kerr. Uh, I, thank you. I, I thank the Cabinet Secretary uh, for her statement. For a just transition to be successful, the community must feel they are an integral part of the change. Now, I appreciate the Cabinet Secretary referenced them in her statement, but can she give more detail today on how they can be actively rather than passively involved? The change, any change, can only be judged to be a success if it's delivered through people and not to people. Cabinet Secretary. Uh, President Officer, I agree entirely uh, with um, Michelle Thompson's um, sentiments. To me, the core uh, definition of a just transition is for people and by people. And that's why in everything that we have sought to do in developing our uh, Grangemouth specific just transition plan, we have sought to co-develop it. Co-develop it with um, those working and operating at the Grangemouth complex, but vitally with those um, living around it. The, the work that we've done to date on developing the plan has very much embedded the um, views of the community. I know as a constituency uh, MSP, if Michelle Thompson has views on how we can enhance that, I would always be very glad to hear it. Equally, I think that Grangemouth Future Industry Board uh, Leadership Forum will continue to be a key fora through which we will um, hear the views of community, not least through local uh, uh, council leader uh, and through Forth Valley College and from others. But I am always interested in the ways that we can maximise community engagement. Thank you. Stephen Kerr to be followed by Evelyn Tweed. I welcome the Cabinet Secretary to a new role. She didn't make any mention of the hydrocracker. There was new information in the Herald on Monday about the hydrocracker. Can she comment? And I worry that she's expecting too much of the Grangemouth Future Industry Board that she just mentioned. It's pretty much stacked with public bodies. Why is there no wider private sector involvement? What exactly is she expecting them to do? And Cabinet. by when? And what resources do they have at their disposal? Cabinet Secretary. Um, Presiding officer, the Greenway Future Industry Board under a previous formulation was about the coming together of public sector bodies to, provi uh, to provide a, a united public sector front through which to engage with industry. It has been reformulated um, through consideration from the Scottish Government and recommendations from the Economy and Fair Work Committee to include industry and Petronius uh, are on uh, that board. So I think that uh, Mr Kerr may wish to revise his comments about industry not being represented. As regards the hydro cracker, Petrianis said in their statement to the Economy and Fair Work Committee that it is currently offline because of uh, operational issues, and it's my understanding that the business is in the second uh, root cause analysis, and I'll await outcome of that. Thank you. Evelyn Tweed to be followed by Richard Leonard. Thank you, Presiding Officer. What assessment has been made of the potential impact of the closure of Petroenius Grangemouth on supply chains and associated business in areas surrounding Grangemouth, such as Stirling? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, I understand uh, Ms Tweed's uh, interest in this and that question of the wider economic um, impact. We are seeking to establish an analysis on the economic impact of, of uh, the proposals. Owing to the complexity of the corporate structure within the companies, it's essential that Petrovenia uh, assist us in doing that. I'm very pleased to say that they have agreed to work on that, and that assessment will look at both the potential impact of uh, closure, but equally will consider how that could be mitigated by transferring to an import terminal, and I will also want it to consider how it could be further mitigated by the coming on stream of those new technologies which we're working to pursue. Richard Lennar to be followed by Kevin Stewart. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. And can I remind members of my voluntary register of trade union interests 
The Cabinet Secretary tells us of meetings and correspondence. Well, what the workers at Grangemouth want are not talking shops, but workshops. They want action and not words. So can the Cabinet Secretary tell us the powers that the Scottish Government does have and is prepared to use to invest in infrastructure, in energy diversification projects at the Grangemouth complex, including hydrogen, CCS and biofuels? How does the Scottish Government intend to apply those powers and on what timescale? Cabinet Secretary. Presiding officer, I hope it's been clear in um, my uh, co contributions this afternoon that we are very much working with uh, the company, including uh, via investment, to support the development of early studies in respect of the development of uh, biofuel refineries and, and fuel switching. These are the means, I believe, that we it's, uh, ensure that we deliver a just transition for the very workers that Richard Leonard is rightly concerned about and that I am too. And as we do that work, I will absolutely ensure that workers' voices, their unions' representatives, are absolutely at the heart of the development of this work because, um, frankly, there are many people who are engaged with this, many who have responsibility in respect of its delivery, and the coming together of all those actors is, I believe, the only way that we will make uh, the progress that's needed. Kevin Stewart to be followed by Gillian Mackay. Uh, thank you, President Officer. Uh, the head of the International Air Transport Association, Willie Walsh, warned recently that sites such as Gran Grangemouth can't produce sustainable aviation fuel due to regulatory barriers imposed by the UK Government. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary what calls have been made by the Scottish Government on the UK Government to remove these serious regulatory barriers to allow the production of uh, SAF at Grangemouth after all, this is a viable and sustainable economic opportunity for the Grangemouth area. Cabinet Secretary. Um, Presiding officer, I am as enthusiastic about the prospects of SAF development in Scotland as, as Mr Stewart is. He's right uh, in terms of those regulatory barriers that have been uh, identified to the, to the production of a biofuel refinery. The most prevalent of these is the UK government's uh, proposed HEFA cap. Um, the, the issue was raised at the recent meeting of the Grangemouth Future Industry Board uh, by Petronius and uh, Scotland's Energy Minister, who's sitting beside me at that point, pressed the UK Government to give full consideration to the UK position and particularly any changes that could be made to support Grangemouth because, after all, it sets us apart from the position prevailing in the EU and Petronius have been clear it is a concern uh, and a barrier to, to what they're, they're seeking to do. Um, so I will continue uh, the work that has been done by my colleague Gillian Martin and by Neil Gray in pressing the UK Government on this and the GFIB board will be an appropriate place for us to do that. Gillian Mackay to be followed by John Mason. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and can I welcome the Cabinet Secretary to her new portfolio. Many of the potential changes for the site in Grangemouth that the Cabinet Secretary set out will functionally change both working in and living beside the refinery. Could the Cabinet Secretary outline what work is underway to ensure that the current workforce where needed can be reskilled in the potential industries she has mentioned, and what work is being done given the proximity of the site to homes to ensure that those in the community know how any operational changes at the site will impact their lives and the local environment? Cabinet Secretary. Um, I thank Gillian Mackay uh, for the question. Uh, she's absolutely right, and it goes to the heart of what I've been uh, seeking to stress, which is that there are many parties uh, whose views uh, and opinions in all of this are absolutely critical. Um, I think the point that she mentions about future skills is, is particularly important. That's why I'm very pleased that um, Forth Valley College uh, are members of the board, that multilateral uh, forum through which we will take forward a just transition uh, plan for Grangemouth. And equally, I would stress again to her uh, the community uh, co-development, which we have sought to be at the heart of how we do the Just Transition Plan. And I would say to her what I said to Michelle Thompson, which is that if she has any recommendations on how we can improve that, I'm always glad to hear them. John Mason to be followed by Willie Rennie. Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary seemed to indicate in her statement that there was quite a good working relationship with the UK Government. And I just wonder if she can assure us that that will continue and can she give us any update in relation to them? Cabinet Secretary. Um, presiding officer, yeah, I believe that the UK government's part in this is absolutely vital. If you consider the uh, ambitions to consider bio uh, 
uh, refinery. You see that the HEFA cap is a potential issue. If you consider the uh, ambitions to consider fuel switching, you can see how critical CCUS is to the development of that. Well, these are deeply intertwined, devolved and reserved um, issues. I also noted how the UK Government have been uh, willing to provide substantial sums in the case of industrial transition in other parts of the UK, uh, namely Wales, and I would expect the same for Scotland. Minister Stewart has attended uh, GFIB on our request. I was disappointed to receive a letter from him yesterday which said he did not think another meeting uh, with me and with the government was uh, required uh, in the meantime. I disagree and I will press him for another one. And in any case, I will be hoping to see him at the next meeting of the GFIB at the end of the month. Willie Rennie to be followed by Murdo Fraser. There has clearly been a lot of activity, but I think Richard Leonard is right. It just sounds probably to most people in Grangemouth like a series of meetings, letters and dates for more meetings. People won't believe it until they see it. So can the minister be a bit more tangible with timescales and outcomes? And can she also set out what the commitment will be longer term from the company, including what the financial commitment will be? Cabinet Secretary. Um, I understand uh, the uh, desire for uh, haste. But equally, some of the really important building blocks of a just transition for Grangemouth cannot be uh, developed overnight. That is why I am determined that the work that we do now, particularly with the board, is as focused and as business-like as it possibly can be to drive the change that, that Willie Rennie is, is right to push for. I think it is important to note, though, that no formal decision has, has been made on the future of the refinery, and currently nothing changes in terms of day-to-day. -day. It is business as usual as far as Petronius are concerned. So whilst the timescale for, for operational change has not yet been determined, you can understand that means that the timescale for uh, transition cannot be set in stone. What I am determined to do, though, is to ensure that we do the work now to minimise any gap between the transitions. Murdo Fraser to be followed by Audrey Nicholl. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I also welcome the Cabinet Secretary to her uh, new role? Uh, she referenced in her statement the HEFA cap as being a barrier to the development of sustainable aviation fuel. The EU is currently considering a HEFA cap for EU member states with at least five EU members actively uh, pushing uh, for this in the EU. So is the Scottish Government's position that there should be no uh, cap or, uh, if it is uh, agreeing that there should be a cap, at what level should it be set? And is that position shared with the SNP's uh, coalition partners in the Greens? Cabinet Secretary. I'm presenting officer, I'm aware of, of consultations um, ongoing. My view is that we should seek to minimise regulatory barriers which get in the way of Scotland's premier and industrial complex being able to uh, undertake a successful transition. Now, that uh, pertains to the HEFA cap, it pertains to the coming on stream of CCUS. I am not going to state uh, an opinion uh, on behalf of the government today, but what I will say is Petronius have been absolutely clear that it's a barrier. So I will use that multilateral forum to work through these issues and to seek to deliver that just transition, which I think we all want. And Audrey Nicholl. Thank you. The Forties pipeline system is a main artery that transports North Sea oil to the Grangemouth oil refinery. And while the transition away from oil and gas is essential for Scotland's energy future, the potential closure of the refinery has implications for the North East energy sector. So given the lack of levers available to the Scottish Government that would allow it to invest, can the Cabinet Secretary outline what engagement has taken place with the UK Government eh, regarding the broader impact this decision would have on the wider Scottish economy, including the North East? Cabinet Secretary. Um, the member is absolutely right to raise uh, the importance of, of 40s. Um, presently and historically, the vast majority of, of crude oil transported into to Grangemouth via the, the 40s pipeline system is exported and not refined at Grangemouth, um, and that's according to market demand. So it's my understanding, therefore, that the 40s pipeline system uh, will continue to act as a means by which crude oil is extracted from the, the continental shelf and, and they can then be sent via uh, Cruden Bay to the Grangemouth industrial cluster and onward uh, to Hound Point um, for export. Um, I hope that clarifies the position in respect of 40s. As regards that question of economic um, analysis, I referred in an earlier answer to the work that is currently ongoing with Petro Ineos in that regard. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. That concludes questions on the statement, and there will be a brief pause before we move to the next item of business to allow uh, front benches to change.